Sarah stepped out of the car, stretching her legs after the long drive. The air in Greenfield was fresh, and the sun seemed to shine a little brighter than usual, casting a golden glow over the tree-lined streets. The houses on either side of the road were almost too perfect. Each one was painted in soft pastel colors with neatly trimmed lawns and white picket fences. It looked like something out of a magazine, too good to be true. She glanced over at Michael, who was busy unloading boxes from the back of their car. What do you think, he asked, smiling as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. It's beautiful, Sarah said, though there was a hesitation in her voice. She couldn't put her finger on it, but something about the neighborhood made her feel uneasy. Everything was so calm, so perfect. As they carried boxes into the house, a friendly voice called out from across the street, Welcome to Greenfield. A woman, who appeared to be in her early thirties, walked over with a wide smile. She had short blonde hair that bounced with every step and was wearing a bright yellow sundress that almost matched her sunny personality. Hi there, I'm Emma, your new neighbor, she said, holding out her hand. You must be Sarah and Michael, right? We've been so excited to have new people in the neighborhood. Sarah shook Emma's hand, surprised by how energetic she was. Yes, that's us. It's nice to meet you, Sarah said, trying to match Emma's enthusiasm, though it felt a little forced. Isn't Greenfield just the best? Emma beamed, looking around as if admiring the neighborhood for the first time. You're going to love it here. Everyone is so friendly, and we have neighborhood events every weekend. Oh, and you have to try Olivia's cookies. She's a fantastic baker. At the mention of Olivia, Sarah noticed another woman walking down the sidewalk, carrying a tray of freshly baked goods. Olivia looked a little older than Emma, with soft brown hair tied neatly into a bun. Her apron was dusted with flour, and she was smiling warmly as she approached. Speaking of Olivia, Emma said with a giggle, here she comes now, you're in for a treat. Hello, new neighbors, Olivia said kindly, holding out the tray. I baked these for you as a little housewarming gift. Welcome to Greenfield. Thank you, Olivia. That's so thoughtful, Sarah said, accepting the cookies. The warm, sweet smell of chocolate filled the air, and Sarah couldn't help but smile. For a moment, her unease faded, replaced by the simple comfort of a kind gesture. But as she bit into one of the cookies, her mind wandered back to the perfect lawns, the identical houses, and the two friendly smiles. She tried to shake off the feeling. Maybe she was just being paranoid. After all, moving to a new place could be stressful. Later that evening, after unpacking most of the boxes, Sarah sat on the porch, watching the sunset over Greenfield. The neighborhood was quiet, almost eerily so. No barking dogs, no kids playing in the streets, just the occasional distant hum of a lawnmower. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Hey, what's on your mind? Michael asked as he joined her, sitting down with two glasses of iced tea. Sarah sighed. I don't know. It's just, everything here is so perfect. Don't you think it's a little strange? Michael laughed lightly. Come on, Sarah. We've been living in the city for so long. Maybe you've just forgotten what it's like to live in a quiet neighborhood. Relax. We're going to love it here. Yeah, maybe you're right, Sarah said, though her doubts lingered. The next morning, Sarah woke up to the sound of birds chirping outside her window. She got dressed and decided to explore more of the neighborhood while Michael worked from home. As she walked down the street, she waved to several neighbors, all of whom greeted her with the same wide, friendly smiles. Everyone seemed busy tending to their perfect lawns or chatting in front of their houses. It was like a scene from a postcard. As she passed by Olivia's house, 
she caught a glimpse of the woman in the kitchen, baking again. Sarah wondered how anyone could have the time to bake so much. It seemed like Olivia was always in the kitchen, always with that same pleasant smile. Morning, Sarah, Emma's voice called out from behind. Sarah turned to see Emma jogging toward her in bright workout clothes. Out for a walk? I love starting the day with some fresh air. Yeah, just getting to know the neighborhood a bit, Sarah replied. You'll settle in in no time. And don't worry about a thing. We're all one big happy family here. If you need anything, just let me know, Emma said with her usual cheery smile before jogging off. As Sarah continued her walk, a strange thought crept into her mind. Maybe the neighborhood was a little too happy. Emma, Olivia, and all the other women seemed rehearsed, like they were following a script. Sarah brushed the thought aside. She was overthinking things. But deep down, a small voice whispered that she should stay alert that perhaps Greenfield was hiding something beneath its flawless surface. And as she walked back home, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that the smiles of her new neighbors were just a little too perfect. Sarah had been living in Greenfield for a few weeks now. She was beginning to settle into the daily rhythm of her new life. Emma and Olivia had become her closest friends in the neighborhood, always stopping by with warm greetings and inviting her over for coffee. On the surface, it all seemed wonderful, but there were moments when Sarah couldn't ignore the feeling that something was off. One morning, Sarah met Emma for a jog around the neighborhood. As they ran side by side, Sarah noticed that no matter how long they jogged, Emma never seemed out of breath. Her pace remained steady, her smile never faded, and she didn't break a sweat. Sarah, on the other hand, was gasping for air after the second mile. Don't you ever get tired? Sarah asked between breaths, laughing lightly to cover up her curiosity. Emma gave her a bright, cheerful smile. Oh, not really. I love running. It's like I have endless energy, she said, not even slightly winded. She glanced around at the houses as they passed. Isn't Greenfield just the most perfect place? Sarah nodded, wiping the sweat from her forehead. It is, she said, but the words felt hollow. She wasn't sure what bothered her more, Emma's flawless enthusiasm, or the way everything in Greenfield always seemed to be in perfect order. The lawns were always perfectly manicured, the streets spotless, and the neighbors, like Emma, acted as if they had no worries in the world. Later that day, Sarah dropped by Olivia's house, where the warm smell of freshly baked cookies filled the air. Olivia was in her kitchen, as usual, smiling as she arranged the cookies on a tray. Sarah, it's so nice to see you. I just finished baking. Would you like a cookie? Olivia asked, her voice as sweet as the treats she offered. Sarah accepted the cookie and sat down at the kitchen table. Thanks, Olivia. You're always baking something delicious. I don't know how you do it. Olivia laughed softly, a sound that seemed almost rehearsed. Oh, it's nothing. I love making sure my family has something sweet to enjoy. It's what a good wife does. The words lingered in Sarah's mind. She couldn't help but notice how every time Olivia or Emma talked about their lives, they spoke in the same way, like they were reciting lines from a script. It was unsettling, and Olivia's smile never seemed to fade, no matter the conversation. As they chatted, Olivia's husband, David, came home from work. He walked into the kitchen and kissed Olivia on the cheek. You always spoil me, honey, he said, picking up a cookie. I don't know what I'd do without you. Sarah watched the interaction closely. There was something robotic about it, like both of them were performing a scene they had rehearsed a hundred times. David turned to Sarah with a grin. You know, Sarah, Michael is a lucky guy. We talk about it sometimes, 
how lucky we are to have perfect wives. Sarah smiled politely, but felt a chill run down her spine. Perfect wives. She had heard that phrase more than once now. Every husband in Greenfield seemed to use it when talking about their wives. Perfect, obedient, cheerful. It was almost as if they weren't real people, but carefully programmed to act a certain way. That evening, there was a neighborhood gathering at the local park. It was a typical Greenfield event. Families laughing, kids playing, women gathered around tables with plates of food, and men talking near the barbecue grill. Sarah tried to blend in, but the longer she stayed, the more uneasy she became. Every conversation she overheard between the women sounded the same. They complimented each other's cooking, talked about how wonderful their husbands were, and shared stories about how peaceful their lives had become since moving to Greenfield. But the way they spoke, with wide smiles and careful words, made it seem like they were reading from a script. No one ever said anything personal, anything real. At one point, Sarah was talking with Emma and Olivia when she noticed something peculiar. Emma and Olivia both laughed at exactly the same time, almost in sync. Their smiles were identical, and for a moment, it felt like Sarah was surrounded by mannequins instead of real people. She had to suppress a shiver. After the gathering, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of unease. As she and Michael drove home, she stared out the window, watching the perfect houses blur by in the dim evening light. Something feels wrong, Sarah said, quietly. Michael glanced over at her. What do you mean? It's just that the people here, the women, they all act the same. It's like they're not real, like they've been trained to be perfect. Emma never gets tired. Olivia is always smiling. And every husband talks about how lucky they are to have the perfect wife. Don't you think that's strange? Michael laughed, shaking his head. Come on, Sarah. You're overthinking it. We've lived in busy cities for years. And now you're in a peaceful town with friendly people. Isn't that what you wanted? But it's not normal, Sarah insisted. No one is this perfect all the time. It's almost like they're pretending. Michael gave her a reassuring smile, though it felt a little dismissive. I think you're just stressed from the move. Greenfield is a nice place, and everyone's just happy. That's a good thing, isn't it? Sarah looked at him, frustration bubbling beneath the surface. He didn't understand, or maybe he didn't want to understand. Yeah, maybe, she muttered though she didn't believe it. As they pulled into their driveway, Sarah stared at the house, its lights glowing warmly in the dark. On the surface, everything looked perfect, but beneath that perfection, something felt terribly wrong. And no matter how much Michael brushed it off, Sarah couldn't ignore the strange behavior of the women in Greenfield. As she climbed into bed that night, Sarah found herself lying awake, staring at the ceiling. Her mind replayed the scenes from the neighborhood gathering, the rehearsed smiles, the identical conversations, the flawless wives. There was something more going on in Greenfield, something hidden beneath the surface, and Sarah knew she had to figure out what it was. The perfect neighborhood, it seemed, was too good to be true. The morning sun streamed through the curtains, but Sarah had barely slept. Her mind raced with questions about the neighborhood, about the women, about the unsettling feeling she couldn't shake. Michael had already left for work, leaving the house quiet, but Sarah couldn't focus on anything except her growing suspicions. She stood by the kitchen window, looking out at the street. Emma was out in her yard, trimming the hedges with her usual cheerful energy. Across the street, Olivia was on her front porch, greeting every passerby with her signature warm smile. Everything seemed perfect, just like always. But Sarah knew something wasn't right. She decided it was time to dig deeper, 
the women were too synchronized, too polished, and their conversations had started to feel rehearsed. Every time Sarah asked a question that went beyond the usual small talk, the responses were vague or strangely repetitive. If she wanted to understand what was really happening, she would need to start investigating on her own. Later that day, Sarah made her first move. She went for a walk around the neighborhood, stopping to chat with some of the other women. At first, it felt like a normal conversation, small talk about the weather, compliments on the gardens. But as soon as Sarah started asking about their lives before Greenfield, the conversations took an eerie turn. So, Emma, where did you live before you moved here? Sarah asked, trying to sound casual as they stood in Emma's perfectly manicured backyard. Emma's smile brightened, but her answer came out in an oddly stiff tone. Oh, I lived in another quiet neighborhood, just like this one. It was lovely, but not as lovely as Greenfield. Sarah pressed a little further. Do you miss your old home? Any friends or family from back then? Emma's smile faltered for just a second before returning, a little too bright. Not at all. Greenfield is my home now, and I couldn't be happier. The response was strange, but even stranger was that when Sarah asked Olivia a similar question later in the day, the answer was almost identical. Greenfield is my home now, Olivia said, her voice calm but unnaturally smooth. I couldn't be happier. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine. It wasn't just what they were saying. It was the way they said it, like they had been programmed to respond a certain way. Every word felt rehearsed, calculated, as if they were reading from the same script. No one shared personal stories. No one talked about their past lives. And no one ever expressed a single negative emotion. It was unnatural, too perfect. That evening, Sarah decided she needed to find out more about Olivia. After dinner, she told Michael that she wanted to take a walk to clear her head. He barely looked up from his work, giving her a distracted nod. It was just as well. Sarah had no intention of taking a simple walk. She had a plan. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the street, Sarah made her way to Olivia's house. She had noticed that Olivia always left her back door unlocked, likely because the neighborhood was so safe. Tonight, Sarah was going to take advantage of that. She slipped into the backyard, her heart pounding in her chest. The house was quiet, with no sign of Olivia or David. Sarah hesitated for a moment, feeling a rush of guilt, but her curiosity overpowered her doubt, and she carefully turned the knob on the back door. It opened with a soft creak. Inside, the house was as immaculate as always. The smell of cookies still lingered in the air, and the kitchen was spotless. But Sarah wasn't interested in cookies. She made her way through the house, her steps light, as she headed toward the part of the house she had never seen, the basement. The door to the basement was tucked away behind the living room, almost hidden. She opened it slowly, her breath catching as she saw the stairs leading down into darkness. Taking a deep breath, Sarah descended the stairs, the wooden steps creaking under her weight. The basement was cold and dark, but when Sarah flipped the light switch, the room was flooded with an eerie, fluorescent glow. Her eyes widened as she took in the sight before her. The basement wasn't just a storage space. It was filled with machines. Large computers hummed quietly in the corner, wires snaking across the floor like vines. Screens flickered with strange, complex data. And in the center of the room, there was a chair with restraints on the arms and legs, like something out of a science fiction movie. Sarah's heart raced. What was this? Why would Olivia have this in her home? She stepped closer to one of the screens, her hands trembling as she tried to make sense of the numbers and codes flashing across it. 
It was some kind of program, but it was unlike anything she had ever seen. And then she saw something that made her stomach drop. A list of names. Emma. Olivia. Rachel. Every woman in the neighborhood was on that list, including her own. Sarah's head spun as she realized what this meant. The women of Greenfield weren't ordinary. They were being controlled, programmed like machines. And now her name was on the list. Before she could investigate further, a soft noise from upstairs made her freeze. Someone was home. Panic surged through her as she turned off the light and crept back up the stairs, careful not to make a sound. She slipped out of the back door just as she heard footsteps approaching from the hallway. Once she was safely outside, Sarah leaned against the wall of the house, her heart pounding in her chest. She had found the proof she needed, but now the real question was, what was she going to do about it? Sarah didn't sleep that night. Her mind replayed the scene in Olivia's basement over and over again. The computers, the wires, the names on the screen. The implications were horrifying. The women of Greenfield weren't just living in a controlled environment. They were being controlled themselves, turned into obedient, cheerful versions of their former selves. And now Sarah knew that she was on the list, too. The next morning, she paced the living room, waiting for Michael to come down for breakfast. Her hands were clammy, her heart raced, and she felt a tightness in her chest. How could she tell him what she had discovered? Would he even believe her? As Michael came down the stairs, dressed for work with his usual calm demeanor, Sarah's stomach twisted. She had to do it. She had to know the truth. Michael, we need to talk, she said, her voice trembling as she tried to keep her composure. Michael looked up from his phone, sensing the seriousness in her tone. Sure, what's going on? He asked, sitting down at the kitchen table, his eyes scanning her face. Sarah hesitated for a moment, unsure of how to start. But the memory of the basement filled her with determination. I went into Olivia's house last night, she began, watching his reaction carefully. Michael raised an eyebrow, confused. Why would you do that? There's something going on in this neighborhood, Michael. Something very wrong, she continued, her voice growing more urgent. I found a room in Olivia's basement. It was filled with computers, wires, machines, like something out of a science fiction movie. And there was a list of names. Emma, Olivia, all the women here, even mine. Michael's expression darkened, and for a moment he didn't say anything. Sarah's heart pounded in the silence. Michael, please tell me you didn't know about this. He sighed, rubbing his temples. Sarah, I didn't want you to find out like this. Her blood ran cold. What do you mean? She whispered, already fearing the answer. Michael looked up, his face a mix of guilt and frustration. I knew, Sarah. I knew about the technology, the men in the neighborhood. We've been working with a man named Meister Parker. He's a scientist. He developed a way to make things easier for us, for everyone, to make our wives happier. Happier? Sarah repeated, her voice rising in disbelief. You're controlling them, Michael. You're turning them into robots. How could you do this? Michael stood up, trying to calm her down. It's not like that, Sarah. It's not about control. It's about making life better. You know how hard things have been. You were always stressed, always worried about work, about the house, about everything. I just wanted to take that away, to make you happy, like the other women here. They're not suffering. They're happy. Sarah stared at him, a mixture of fury and heartbreak rising in her chest. Happy? You think this is happiness? They're not even themselves anymore, Michael. They're just versions of who they used to be. Obedient, perfect, but not real. Michael's face softened as he reached for her hand, but Sarah pulled away, her skin crawling at his touch. 
I did it for you, Sarah, he insisted. I didn't want you to be overwhelmed or miserable. Look at Olivia. Look at Emma. They don't worry about anything anymore. Isn't that what you wanted? Peace, simplicity, happiness? Not like this, Sarah snapped, backing away from him. You don't get to decide what makes me happy. You don't get to strip away my freedom because you think it's better for me. This is wrong, Michael. So, so wrong. Michael frowned, frustration flickering in his eyes. Sarah, I did this to help you, to help us. Greenfield is a place where we don't have to deal with all the stress of the outside world. Isn't that worth it? Sarah shook her head, tears stinging her eyes. You're talking about turning me into someone I'm not. I'd rather be stressed and worried and real than be turned into some perfect, obedient wife who smiles on command. How can you not see how terrible this is? Michael's expression hardened. You don't understand, Sarah. We're building something better here. You won't have to worry about anything ever again. I don't want that, she said, her voice shaking with anger. I refuse to become one of them. I'm leaving, Michael. I can't stay here. Michael's face paled. Leaving? Where would you even go? You can't just walk away from Greenfield. Watch me, Sarah replied, her voice steely. As she turned to head toward the door, Michael grabbed her arm. Sarah, wait, just listen to me. We can figure this out. You don't have to make a rash decision. She yanked her arm free, glaring at him with a fury she hadn't known she possessed. No, Michael. You made the decision for me when you went along with this nightmare. I won't be part of it. Without another word, Sarah stormed out of the house, her heart pounding as she stepped outside. The perfect streets, the perfect houses, the perfect smiles of her neighbors, it all felt like a prison now. She wasn't sure where she would go, but one thing was certain, she couldn't stay in Greenfield, not after what she had learned. As she walked down the street, the sun shining brightly over the manicured lawns, Sarah's resolve hardened. She would find a way out of this nightmare, no matter what it took. Sarah knew she couldn't simply walk out of Greenfield. The perfect neighborhood was a cage, and the men in charge wouldn't let her leave so easily. She had seen too much, learned too much, but she was determined to escape, to be free again. That night, after the confrontation with Michael, Sarah lay in bed, her mind racing as she planned her escape. She couldn't just run blindly. They would find her. No, she needed to be smart. She needed to use their technology against them. Her thoughts returned to Olivia's basement and the strange computers she had seen. If those machines were controlling the women, then maybe, just maybe, she could find a way to disable them. It was a risk, but Sarah had no choice. She wasn't going to live the rest of her life as a puppet. The next morning, Sarah began her plan. Michael had left for work early, and the house was quiet. Sarah took a deep breath, grabbed a small bag with essentials, and slipped out the back door. She avoided the main streets, keeping to the shadows as she made her way to Olivia's house. Her heart pounded in her chest as she approached the back door. Once again, it was unlocked. Sarah crept inside, moving quickly but quietly, hoping that Olivia and David weren't home. Down in the basement, the machines were humming just as they had been before. Sarah stared at the screens, trying to make sense of the data. She wasn't a computer expert, but she understood enough to know that this was where the women were being monitored, their behavior controlled. If she could disrupt the system, she might be able to buy herself enough time to escape. She sat down at the terminal, her fingers trembling as she navigated through the programs. Her eyes landed on a series of commands labeled behavior adjustments. Beneath that was a list of the women's names, 
each one linked to a series of settings. Emma, Olivia, and all the others were right there, their personalities reduced to lines of code. With shaking hands, Sarah altered the settings. She didn't have time to be subtle. She maxed out the system, turning up the independence and awareness sliders to their highest levels, hoping it would wake the women up. Then she initiated a system-wide reset. The screen flashed as the commands processed. For a moment, the machines went silent. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. Had it worked? Suddenly, she heard footsteps upstairs. Her heart raced. Someone was home. Mr. Parker arrived before she could finish. As Sarah rushed to leave, the basement door swung open, and there stood Mr. Parker, his face cold and calculating. Behind him were several of the neighborhood men, including Michael. They looked tense, their eyes filled with something between anger and concern. You shouldn't have done that, Sarah, Mr. Parker said, his voice calm but menacing. You've disrupted the system. You don't understand what we're doing here. Oh, I understand perfectly, Sarah shot back, her voice strong, despite the fear bubbling in her chest. You're turning women into robots, making them your perfect little slaves. You think you're making life better, but you're just taking away everything that makes them human. Mr. Parker stepped closer, his eyes narrowing. You're wrong. We're improving their lives, removing stress, worry, pain. Don't you see? This is progress. This is the future. Sarah shook her head. You call this progress? Turning people into mindless versions of themselves? No, I won't be part of this. Michael moved toward her, his face a mix of frustration and desperation. Sarah, please, you don't have to do this. We can fix this. You don't understand how hard things were for you before. This was supposed to help. Help! Sarah's voice rose, trembling with fury. I'd rather have my freedom, Michael. I'd rather be myself than whatever you want me to be. Mr. Parker sighed, signaling to the men behind him. It's a shame. We could have given you a perfect life, but if you won't accept it willingly. They stepped forward, but Sarah was ready. She had prepared for this. Sarah fights back. In the few moments before Mr. Parker arrived, Sarah had managed to rewire the control systems in the basement. She hadn't just altered the women's settings. She had also created a back door in the system that allowed her to trigger an emergency shutdown. As the men advanced, Sarah hit a button on her phone and the entire basement went dark. The machines shut down with a loud hum and the lights flickered off. Confusion spread across Mr. Parker's face as he looked at the now dead screens. What did you do? He demanded. I'm ending this, Sarah said, her voice steady. Suddenly, there was movement outside. The women of Greenfield, Emma, Olivia, and the others, were emerging from their homes, their faces no longer locked in pleasant smiles. They looked disoriented as if waking up from a long dream. The spell had been broken. As Mr. Parker and the men scrambled to regain control, Sarah slipped past them, running out of the house and into the street. She could hear them calling after her, but she didn't stop. She ran to her car, her heart pounding as she fumbled with the keys. She started the engine just as Mr. Parker and Michael burst out of Olivia's house, but it was too late. Sarah hit the gas, speeding down the street, leaving Greenfield behind, the road to freedom. As she drove away from the perfect neighborhood, Sarah felt a strange mix of emotions, fear, relief, anger, and hope all swirling inside her. She didn't know where she was going or what the future held, but she knew one thing for certain. She was free. The sun was setting as she drove along the empty road, the sky painted with hues of orange and pink. In the rearview mirror, Greenfield was nothing more than a distant memory, its perfect houses and perfect smiles fading into the horizon. Sarah smiled for the first time in days, a real smile 
filled with the promise of freedom. She had escaped the nightmare, and now she was heading toward a new beginning, a place where people were free to be themselves. As the road stretched out before her, Sarah felt a sense of peace wash over her. She didn't know what was waiting at the end of this road, but she knew one thing. It was hers to choose.